of the opera, made in 1925, was one of the most elaborate horror thrillers ever put on film, and featured one of the finest characterizations of that master of the grotesque, Lon Chaney. The setting was the tremendous Paris Opera House, built in the 1870s, with a white marble grand stairway, 2,500 doors, dressing rooms for over 500 actors, and foundations for lowering 50-foot backdrops. The picture is based on the novel by Gaston Leroux, but some of the most vivid scenes of all were original with the picture, as you will see in these excerpts. The curtain has risen on another performance at the Opera House, the dressy audience, unaware of the backstage specter cast by a deformed musical genius whose shadowy presence threatens every member of the company. The phantom lives deep in the catacombs below the opera house. No one has yet seen his face or knows his story. Yet, all fear the reign of terror his warped brain has unleashed upon the opera. As the performance finishes, the ballerinas grow cold with horror as they sense the evil presence of the phantom. Christine, the prima donna, who owes her success as a singer to the phantom's tutoring, whispered secretly through the walls, is alone in not fearing him. And when for the first time he comes to her from behind the walls, she is only momentarily startled by the strange mask that he wears. silver voice and suave manner, she trustingly allows him to take her to his lavish chambers far below the theater. The scene is played by Mary Philbin. repeated warnings not to look at his face, Christine is overcome by curiosity. upon his ugliness, but since she has failed to heed his warning never to remove his mask, she shall stay with him through the years to brighten his toad's existence with her love. as quickly as it arose. Ashamed of his ugliness, he realizes that he has now lost forever any hope of attaining Christine's love. Christine pleads for her freedom, promising never to reveal the phantom's hiding place or her indenture to him. The Phantom has given Christine her freedom on condition that she give up the Count, the man she hopes to marry, and return to him, the Phantom, to become his wife. 
High on the roof of the opera house, Christine tells the Count, played by Norman Carey, of her terrible pact with the Phantom. Unknown to them, the ubiquitous Phantom, in the shadow of the statues, overhears as Christine describes him as a loathsome monster. He lets out an eerie cry as he realizes he has been betrayed. and Christine decide to try to outwit the Phantom by escaping to England. But the Phantom, obsessed with hatred and the urge to kill, plans to strike back. His first new deed, the ruthless murder of a stagehand. Dame Cathedral, the actual sets used by Cheney as the hunchback two years before.
to the banks of the Seine. And a murderous life comes to a violent and bloody end. The Phantom of the Opera is no more.